Welcome back to Community Matters. We're continuing our discussion about the future of Raleigh. And joining us next is Kate Pierce, park planner for the city of Raleigh. Kate, thanks for joining us. I'm happy to be here. What a cool job that is. Dream job. It's oh, amazing. Really? You yes. get to decide the fun stuff that goes into the park. I get to facilitate the process to decide. Uh, I'm not the final decision maker, but that's the community. That is neat. Well, I mean, we're, as we're talking about Raleigh, one of the big acquisitions in, in recent times has been Dorothea Dix. Right. And that is a park that everybody's quite excited about. Yeah. Uh, tell us about first, how, how did we come to own it and how did the city get it? Yeah, well, I think this has really been a labor of love for many years. Um, once the state decided to close the hospital, a number of officials, elected officials, community leaders, business leaders came together and thought that Dorothea Dix would make a great park. So folks like Charles Meeker, Mayor McFarlane, Gregory Poole, Bill Paget have been working over the past 10 years to um, facilitate the purchase of the property by the city of Raleigh. And then last July, the city finalized the deal with the state and now we are the owners of 307.9 acres. And that's a lot of land. I mean, for folks who have not been out there, it's right. a pretty big park. It is a very big park. You know, it is um, compared to a lot of other places around the country, it's fairly sizable for an urban area to have a park of this size. Well, there are big plans for this park and it's, and it's hard to describe, I know that, but right. I keep hearing people describe it or their hopes that it will be a destination park. Right. What is a destination park? That's a great question. I think it means different things for different communities. So great destination parks usually have um, some great outdoor open space. They also have other things that bring people to the park. So if you think about Forest Park in St. Louis, for example, they've got an amphitheater, three museums, and a zoo. What are gonna be the other attractions that bring people to Dorothea Dix? Those are the questions that we'll ask and try to answer during the planning process. But there's usually always something else that's bringing people to visit the park. And right now you're, you, you have the acreage, but you're also sharing it. That's right. Does that, how did, was that an issue or a problem as no. you plan the destination no, park? No, you know, it's actually a great arrangement. So the city did purchase the entire acreage, 307.9, um, acres, 85 structures totaling 1.2 million square feet of building space. Wow. We actually lease a lot of that building space back to the Department of Health and Human Services. So they have two different leases on the property. And I'm, I'm glad they're there because that means they're maintaining the buildings and it, about 2,000 employees go to work there every day. So it's a, also a, an employment campus. So as we think about the future of the park, whatever we do will be phased with the um, implementation of the park plan as DHHS finds a new location for their headquarters. Eventually they'll be phased out. Correct. So then everything will be there. So you can really think big. I exactly. gotta ask, I know you're soliciting ideas from every, right. I'm sure everybody's coming. Hey, yes. Kate, I have an idea. Right. What are some of the ideas? You know, it really ranges. Um, I've heard everything from um, a water park to um, also thinking people a ultimate Frisbee stadium to um, having a model, air, or model airplane airport. Um, so there have been a lot of ideas. The great thing is that it is a lot of space. There's a lot of opportunity to do a whole lot of different stuff um, and meet a lot of the needs of the community. Do you have any criteria? Because I know Raleigh's growing right. and it's going crazy. And I know at times, and we're not there yet, we're not in New York, but um, this is a pretty precious piece of land whether it's a water slide or water mm -hmm. park or whatever it might be, do you have a list of things that you'd like to accomplish? Yeah, you know, I think what one of the challenges will be is that um, this is something that has the opportunity to lead Raleigh into the future. Um, we probably don't know the best idea for this park yet. We have to think big, we have to think bold, and we have to think long term. This is not something that's going to happen five or ten years. This is going to evolve over 25, 50 years. So the vision for the future of this place has to be bold and really lead the future of the community. Do you have a you know, an idea yourself? You know, I don't have, so you're I don't the have a personal you're idea. The park I know. Um, really for me it's I think that there has to be something iconic um, and visionary. Um, I don't know what that great idea yet is yet. Maybe it'll come from the community, maybe it'll come from the consultants that we are going to work with, but I think the best idea is still out there. When you put a, a park like this together, I guess any park, but this one in particular, because it is going to be something different than all right. the rest, uh, how important it is the partnerships that you create? Because is the city of Raleigh hoping to do this alone, or are they looking at private uh, entities? That's a great question. So we are very fortunate in that we have a group of kind of private citizens that have formed a group called the Dix Park Conservancy. 
and they are the city's philanthropic partner through the master planning phase. And so a lot of these folks were very um, integral into the, the purchase and the acquisition phase, and now they have transitioned into a fundraising arm that will help raise the money to fund the master planning process for the park. So this is the first time the city has entered into one of these public-private partnerships with a group, and um, it's not new nationally, so if you think Central Park, Central Park has a conservancy, or Balboa Park in San Diego, they have a conservancy, but it's a new model for Raleigh. Um, but we could not go it alone. Public money alone will not create the vision that we need for this place. So for folks who are watching and they're going, I have the idea, right. and they want to get it to you, yeah. or they just would like some more information, right. where would they go? The best place to go right now is our website, so um, raleighnc.gov, and then just keyword search Dorothea Dix. That'll bring up the page, and my contact information is right there. So I get two to three emails a day from folks with do. great ideas. Um, I think more importantly is that we do anticipate kicking off a planning process in 2017, and there will be lots of opportunities from public forums to workshops for people to get their ideas out there. And people um, can go out there now yeah, so and, and experience it. That's, that's true. So um, what we ask is that during business hours that people are just very respectful of DHHS operations because people are at work there. Um, um, but on the weekends and after business hours, there are a lot of places, great big open fields that people can go and enjoy. Um, and so we welcome the community to come out there. We also are doing a lot of programming. So for instance, on Sunday, October 2nd, we have a big music um, festival, or not festival, a concert going on in the park. Neat. So that'll be fun. We do art classes, fitness classes, walking tours, stargazing. Um, we're also asking the community, what do you want to do out there? And we develop a program around it. That's neat. Yeah, so it's, for, it's exciting, it really is. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll send you an email later. Okay. I got some great. ideas, I got some ideas. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Uh, keep it right here on Community Matters. Up next, you can get uh, the scoop on Raleigh's new train station.